Dave Hogsett here for Practical Show and Roo. Uh, I was just getting ready to do a strength training routine. Thought maybe I would uh, give a quick little demo on what I do. I think uh, strength training is vitally important for all martial artists, uh, particularly uh, for practical martial artists, um, kind of that idea that we need to be fit to fight, so to speak. Uh, obviously, we want to do everything possible to avoid confrontation, uh, but God forbid we get into a confrontation, we want to be in good physical uh, form, good, good, uh, have good physical fitness that we could actually uh, protect ourselves, uh, do what we need to do, and get out of there. Uh, so I try to ha have at least uh, two or three strength training um, activities during the week. Uh, also, um, where I am, I'm still in kind of a, a uh, for phasing out of our quarantine because of uh, the uh, virus. Um, so this has re been really good opportunity for me to continue working on uh, my strength uh, um, uh, training. Uh, but when things go back to, to quote unquote normal, uh, we still want to be able to do some solo training, uh, training in our homes or, or wherever uh, we might uh, be uh, training and working out. Uh, so anyway, this is some uh, activities that I do. I like to intersperse the strength training activities with cardio work on the heavy bag. Um, <clears throat> in terms of my strength training, uh, I don't have a, a weight set. Uh, so for my resistance training, I use gravity straps. I just, uh, I've attached them to the rafters here in my basement, um, and so they're kind of always there. Uh, but you can also use these to travel with. You can put them in, in, in doors and so on. Uh, so really, um, a, a really nice sort of piece of equipment uh, that's flexible and, um, and transportable. So uh, what I'll do is sort of demo uh, real quickly what, what the different exercises that I do. Uh, and then I'll also sh demo the um, cardio work on the heavy bag. And with the cardio work, I try to have um, kind of a bit of a practical application of, of some of the techniques uh, that I'm doing and try to visualize those on, on the bag. How I sort of vary up the activities, I don't want my body to get used to uh, doing the same thing each time. Uh, so I'll sometimes do the exercises in a different order uh, or uh, one week I might do, I might break them up. I have about, um, let's see, I've got six basic uh, strengthening uh, exercises. So uh, one week I might do um, four sets of three of them one day, four sets of the other three on another day. Uh, another week I might do two sets of all six one day, two sets of all six uh, on the second day. Uh, so again, just trying to vary it up a little bit. All right, so let's uh, kind of go through uh, the, the uh, different uh, uh, strength training exercises that I do. So the, the first exercise is uh, basic uh, leg exercises and different types of squats. So one type of squat that I do, I try to keep my feet about um, shoulder width apart and I just angle my feet in such a way that I don't put extra stress on my knees. And then I just do the squats my intervals, I usually have about one minute um, for the uh, strength training and about 45, uh, I think 45 seconds for the cardio. Uh, and then just use an, an interval a timer on my phone. So that's one type of squat. The other type of squats I'll do is bringing my feet together a little bit. Um, Trying to keep good, good posture, I'm going down as deeply as I can. For these, the reason why I do those particular squats is for uh, throwing, right? Uh, being able to get those good hip, to hip tosses where your feet are together and you're getting low, getting the person on your back and then you're lifting to get that throw. So doing that kind of squat helps me uh, develop the strength in my legs uh, for that. <clears throat> so those are the, the leg exercises. So the next exercise I do is uh, for the back. These are basic uh, kind of rowing. All right, so you get close here and then pull up. And here, what's nice about the gravity straps, as you get used to that, getting your feet further away right, makes the exercise even more difficult. The next exercise I do is uh, a chest press. It's kind of like basically like a, a push-up. And again, depending on where you put your feet, that'll make the exercise uh, more challenging. And then sometimes here, I'll keep the, uh, my, my hands closer together for a few reps, and then I might move the hands out a little bit wider, right, just to work all aspects uh, of your chest. And then for arm exercises, 
There's uh, biceps and tricep uh, exercises. Same idea. The, the further away your, your feet are uh, from uh, your center, uh, the harder the activity will be. And also just regular curls, you can also add in forearm curls as well. And then I'll do a tricep press. This kind of looks like you're in your push-up position, but instead of pushing straight up, you're going to be moving your arms downwards. So this takes a little bit of finessing here to kind of figure that motion out. But there's a really good tricep press. And the same idea, you can be, scoot your feet further back to make it, to give you a little bit more resistance. And then I have several uh, abdominal exercises I can do. I usually get a, a mat here, and I get a hard concrete floor, so the little thin mat, like a yoga mat, is kind of nice. So of course you have basic uh, uh, sit-ups, and I try to go to, to the right, middle, and the left. Also, we'll do uh, leg lifts. Also, going to the middle, right, and the left. I'll do some uh, crunches. And also, have kind of crunches to the left and to the right. I'm going to lean a little bit, do these kind of crunches. And then lastly, I'll also do a basic plank. And then sometimes I'll do a plank on either side. And then hold, you know, hold, hold the plank for the minute cycle. So those are the uh, basic uh, strength training uh, exercises that I do. Interspersed between the different uh, resistance training uh, exercises, I do uh, a cycle of cardio on, on the heavy bag. And here, you can do a variety of things, right? Uh, you basic punches and kick combinations and so on. Uh, <clears throat> what I try to do is to work kind of the practical application of my key home. Uh, and I sort of think, <clears throat> uh, I think about those key home uh, in terms of kind of a low block, high block, chest block, shoot the uke. Uh, and then I work on my kicks. And so I might, so I'll cycle through, so I'll do the um, one of the leg exercises and then I'll go to the kind of uh, low block keyhole activity. Then I'll uh, go back and do another rep of, of the legs, come back and do the next keyhole. So that's kind of how I, how I cycle it through. You know? All right, so these are the, uh, the different uh, keyhole activities uh, or exercises that I do on the heavy bag. Uh, so the first one is, is a basic application of a low block. So here I'm thinking of the flinch response, moving that arm down, and then getting strikes in and out. And so I use the, the belt here to simulate uh, uh, limbs. Back, and then just do the other side. And I just do that for back and forth, back and forth for that whole uh, cycle. The next one I work is a basic key home for a high block application. So I'm thinking here of a lapel grab, blocking, striking the, uh, the crook of his arm, and then pulling that arm across, hitting him um, uh, in the kidneys, getting him bent over, knee strikes, and elbows. So again, I use this, uh, the belt to simulate the lapel grab. And so I try to you know, sort of visualize everything. So he's, he's grabbed, I get this other arm up, off to the side to get away from that arm, that's probably going to be swinging at me, right? And then work the other side. And then do that through the whole cycle. Next one is the uh, chest block. So here I'm thinking of a, a clinch scenario. I'm using the wind up for the chest block. 
to hit the back of the head. The chest block motion is peeling his head back, hammer fisting. He should be kind of bent over. Some knee strikes, finish it with some elbows, and out. So jump to the other side. Again, just keep working both sides through the whole cycle. <clears throat> then we got the uh, uh, shoot the ukes. <clears throat> so here, I'm just thinking again, clinch response, wrapping the arm up, striking the neck. He, his one response would be to cover, in which case, pull down, and I can uh, strike. Or he might swing with the other hand, in which case, I'm going to uh, check it, wrap it up, and strike. <clears throat> the other side. And again, cycle through. Uh, keep doing um, both sides until that the timer buzzes, and then go to the uh, the next weight training or the uh, resistance training activity. <clears throat> All right. So those are the hand techniques. So I've got the uh, low block, high block, chest block, shoot the ukes. <clears throat> then. I'll start cycling in uh, leg, leg techniques, uh, knees and kicks uh, combos. So I in here, I think of kind of the way I organize it in my head so I can remember. I do um, low, uh, uh, front kicks, round kicks, side kicks, and then I'll do uh, spinning back, spinning hook. <clears throat> uh, and then I try to think in terms of kind of one set will be more of a practical application, the other set will be kind of sport, uh, sport karate uh, training. <clears throat> So for the front kicks, the first set I'm thinking here, um, I'm doing basic knee strikes, um, kind of that the wind up, if you will, for the front kick. Um, because I'm in close here, so I, I'm just thinking in terms of knee strikes. So I'm doing a basic clinch scenario where I'm getting some knee strikes in, then loop, you know, getting loop, free that hand, grab the head, and strike. Yeah. And then you switch up, do the other side. And again, do that for uh, that uh, interval time. And then in terms of um, the uh, uh, sort of more sports style uh, front kicks, I'll just get a little bit of distance, like fighting distance from the bag, and I'll do uh, two front kicks followed up by a jab, cross, and a hook. Then my legs are already switch, and I just go to the other side. And again, keep doing that uh, for that interval. <clears throat> for the uh, round kicks, I think for the practical part, I'm doing um, the uh, sort of kicks, low kicks to the knee or just above the knee. So again, I'll, I'll do that from a clinch scenario. <clears throat> and then the, the hand combinations there. Are a basic elbow, right? Because you're already in tight, kind of got a hold of the guy, you know where his head is, right? So I'm basically doing some low kicks to the knees and then elbows uh, to the head. Switch up, do the, do the other side. Again, cycle through. So then the, the sport. Uh, the sport uh, roundhouse kick, again, I'll get it fighting distance. I'll do two roundhouse kicks and then do uh, uh, the jab, cross, and the hook. Then I'll move to the uh, kind of side kicks. Again, these are all being interspersed. Uh, go to, go to the uh, resistance training, come back, do cardio, resistance training, cardio. So then for the uh, kind of more practical sidekicks, um, they're not exactly sidekicks, uh, so I'm doing uh, the, kind of the, the hunchy stop to the uh, inner thigh or to uh, above the knee. <coughs> and then follow up with the elbow strike.
And again, do that for the whole uh, cycle. For the more sport uh, sidekick, again, working from a uh, um, fighting distance, I try to get two sidekicks in and then I do the jab cross and the hook. Or I'll do a back fist, uh, cross and hook, whatever. And out. Then uh, from there, I do. I have two more uh, kicking sets that I can do: uh, the uh, spinning back, uh, and then the spinning uh, spinning hook. Right. So again, this is a particular set that's used in between um, going back to doing a strength exercise and then coming in doing the cardio. And for these, um, in this kind of the, these are more sport. Uh, I don't think of um, doing the. Uh, uh, spinning techniques in a practical setting. Again, I don't think it's good to be turning your back uh, on your enemy. But for sport, really, really good, good techniques, and, and they're fun to work on a heavy bag. So I'm thinking here in terms of kind of technique comes in, usually maybe one of their round kicks. So I'm going to kind of block it and then sneak that spinning technique in, and I follow that up with a, a, a spinning back fist and some strikes. And then just do the other side. And then lastly, I've got the, uh, the spinning hook. Same idea. I'm just kind of thinking of uh, that technique is coming around, usually a roundhouse kick. I'm sort of checking it, spinning, and doing, uh, doing that uh, uh, high uh, spinning hook kick. And to the other side. So those are kind of the, the different combos I do on the heavy bag. So again, the idea is work a strengthening uh, exercise for however long your interval timer is set for. And then when that uh, particular set is done, go do a uh, quick cardio on the heavy bag. Go back, do another. Uh, uh, repetition or another set for that activity for the exercise come back work on the heavy bag and so again however uh, you set up your interval timer uh, with those six basic um, exercises strengthening exercises and then the different key hong uh, hand technique and kicking techniques um, that you work for cardio on the heavy bag you can easily set up a really nice 25 to 30 minute workout so I hope that gives you some ideas on what you can do for your own solo training uh, for your strength training. Again, the idea here is we need to be strong and fit, kind of we need to be uh, fit to fight, so to speak, be it for sport or, God forbid, we're in an actual uh, self-defense scenario where our uh, awareness and avoidance, de-escalation elements, unfortunately didn't work, and we find ourselves having to engage uh, in, in physical confrontation and then get out. So we need to be strong enough to do that and then to get ourselves away from the situation. So I hope that's helpful for you. Uh, best of success and have fun setting up your uh, own um, strength training and cardio combinations.
All right. So I just finished with uh, my full uh, 25 minute uh, workout. As you can tell, I'm pretty tired. Uh, and that's kind of the point. Um, so again, uh, use an interval timer. I, I just checked my timer actually. I've got one minute for the, uh, the strength training exercise and one minute for the cardio. Um, I've got about, I think if I remember, <clears throat> I've got 12, uh, 12 cycles, uh, total of 24. Um, so that gets me through about 25 minutes uh, thereabouts. Right? Um, yeah, so the other thing, uh, again, you want to be fit to fight. Uh, you want to be working on your cardio as well as your strength training. Um, and then uh, lastly, what I really like about this, by the tail end of it, so the last four, three to four exercises or, or, or circuits, uh, I'm pretty well wiped. Uh, but I fight through it, right? And that gets you used to fighting through exhaustion. So, you know, my hands are often shaking, right? You're filled with adrenaline and other uh, um, hormones and so on. Uh, and that's what you want to do. You want to kind of get used to that experience. So uh, train to exhaustion and then keep training through it. And you can do that by yourself. Uh, of course, it's better with partners. Uh, you get their feedback, right? Um, but you can do that on your own. It's just a little bit harder to motivate yourself. It's real easy to sit there and go, yeah, I'm kind of tired. I think I'll stop now, right? Uh, but you just got to keep pressing through. And that's for me, that's where visualization comes in. I'm visualizing that enemy. It's still there, right? I can't just say, ah, I'm going to quit now. Um, so if, through that visualization activities, really helps supplement your solo training. So there it is. Uh, have a ball. Have fun. Uh, get the sweating. Get yourself tired. And then go relax. Take care. Dave Hawks at uh, Batsco Shorn Room.